you very much. So thank you for inviting me. Today I'm going to talk about Kubernetes learning in continuous sign optimization. This is a, a work that we start, started just a few months ago. So we will present some preliminary results and some ideas and, and some where to go from this. Uh, so this is the overview. I will present three parts. The first part will be the optimization problem, just to, to see the traditional optimization problem and how it's related in alternative view as a feedback uh, optimization. And from that point, I will present some relationship between Kubman operator basic concept and some continuous time optimization concept more or most basically uh, on solve point dynamics. And finally, I think that the most important part will be some work in progress and, and, and ideas that, that, that we think that we can develop in the near future. So let me start with this uh, word from Michael Jordan that somehow summarized the, the, the work of our project or most of my group that we need to understand that the intelligent behavior of large scale, large scale system arises as much from the interaction among agents as from the intelligence of individual agents. So let me put some context from one of our projects uh, on cyber physical energy system. The idea is to connect to the distribution network some distributed energy resources, for example, distributed generators, smart loads, or micro bits. So that's, that's, that's some problem that, that has so many challenges because they have to uh, connect between them in order to solve a dynamic resource allocation problem, that is the dispatch problem. So they have to make a collective decision based on local measure and they have to interact. The idea is we don't, we don't have a centralized controller, but the, the, the system have to make some choices uh, in a distributed way. So in general, in general terms, this is what we have. We have a system that is distributed on a network with some constraint, physical constraint in networks, also not only the communication, but also physical communication, the physical constraints. We have measure and sometimes, or most of the time, we don't have uh, absolute certainty about the model. So we have some parametric uncertainties and no linearities. And on top of that, we need somehow to, to go to real time operation of the system. So that's one of the applications that we have been working on. So let me start with the idea of this alternative view of the optimization problem. We can see this is a, what we call, what some people call nonlinear feedback-based optimization. So this is a traditional, very basic optimization problem when we have convexity and everything in this function, and we have a constraint that is a linear constraint. So we have this problem, it's a traditional, uh, optimization problem. And from this, we can use the theory of solid point dynamics to obtain this equation that is solving dynamically this optimization problem. So this is a traditional approach, but we can see here in this uh, picture here in this figure that this model, this optimization, this solid point dynamics can be understood as a feedback controller. You can see here one part, the primal variable that is X, can be uh, as a primal controller and the dual variables can be understood as a dual controller. So this is the feedback, this is the same equation here, but the idea we can see here, we can see this as a feedback based optimization. So this is the very basic idea. We can go from this to more complex scenarios. For example, we had a plant and later we would have uh, very agents interacting between them so the problem would be more interesting. Will we have some constraint, more complex constraint and interaction between them? So this is the idea. Why is it interesting to use this uh, continuous time optimization, uh, this kind of style point dynamics? So, so in this alternative view, what, what, what is the, the challenge or what, what are the things that we are gaining here? So new possibility, to deal with complex network system with self-optimizing behavior. So here we are driving a physical network towards an optimal 
study the state on one hand. Also, the idea is we can try to increase the robustness against uncertainty and acuity of the problem. And we can also try to handle the time varying disturbance. Because in this case, because it's a dynamical system, we are somehow responding dynamically to changes in the inputs or like a disturbance. And we can also try to go as uh, a model free optimization in this, in this scenario. And finally, one of the things that is also interesting is that we can uh, rid off of the set points and reference signals because we are producing the, the self optimizing loops inside. So just to remember that robustness is key in this kind of optimization. And this somehow can be related with robust optimization, but in robust, in robust optimization, we are considered uh, all, all the realization of the, all the cases of the system. Here, because we are in a dynamical system, we are just dealing with the, perturb the perturbance of the scenario that is actually happening. It's not just all of the scenarios. So it somehow is more efficient from a computational point of view. Okay, let's move to the constrained optimization problem just to put some basic definition that we already know, but just to be agree on that. So if the objective function, this is the constraint function. So with this, we can obtain the Lagrangian function. And with that is also we need that it was called solid point dynamic is because we are going to arrive to a solid point. It's a, it's a solid point because we are minimizing in the primal variable, variable and we are maximizing in the dual variable. So we are arriving uh, to that point. Under some convexity and continuously uh, conditions, we will arrive with a zero gap between these two solutions. So we will arrive to the global optimized the global solid point dynamics. With this, we have this uh, Kalskon-Tucker stationary conditions on all the variables. So Soul point dynamics appear to solve this set of equations dynamically. So that's the, the beginning of that. So this is then our soul point dynamics. Let me put this in just one variable, the, the primal and the dual variable in just one uh, soul point flow like this. When we have the, we see here that we are descending, we have a gradient descent in the primal variables, and we have a gradient ascent in the dual variables. And this induce, this induce a solid point vector field specified like this. So this is one of the first connections that we will see with the Kuhlman operator later. So uh, solid point dynamics, as I said, can be used to solve uh, the constraint optimization problem. Uh, we can also, under strictly complexity and differentiability, we can obtain, we, we know that we are going to converge to the global minimum. And we can, we can also use some traditional results on the stability of the fixed point. So what is the, the plan, the talk today, the preliminary result is the connection between that, some of that concept to some of the concept of the Kuban operator approach. So how we can use this Kuban operator for solving this constraint optimization problem using, using its connection with dynamical system for numerical algorithms. So we know that Kuban operator, some results have been shown that can be used as a dynamical system. So we can use it for numerical algorithms to do that. Uh, also, in this case, we only need pairs of state in order to obtain a Kuban operator approach. So we'll see a little bit about that. And we will dealing with two cases, a strictly convex function, and what happens when we have non-convex function. That is the case when we have multiple solid points. So we will see that. So let's move to that connection between Kuhlman and continuous time optimization. Uh, just to introduce the, the traditional Kuhlman operator, we call the observable in this case is the is the H variable. And we have also the traditional Kuhlman definition of the evolution of the composition operator of the induced, induced uh, map. 
Uh, we also know that we have when we are in discrete time. So we are seeing here that this is the evolution of one step of the variable. We you know this relation, and we know that the common operator is linear. And with that, we can obtain the other concept that we are going to use today is the infinitesimal generator. That is the continuous time version of the, the Kuhlman operator. So we obtain this uh, continuous time evolution of the observable function as an ordinary differential equation. So this is the basic concept that I will use. And of course, the eigen decomposition, the relationship between the eigen functions and the eigen values of the Kuhlman operator. These three, these three ideas are going to connect it with the continuous time. So in, in, in summary, we are going to use the Kuhlman data-driven learning. We have a nonlinear system. We lift it into dynamical and obtain a finite dimensional approximation. In this particular case, we are using the extended dynamic mode decomposition, but many other methods are already available. So we have just enjoyed this one because we have some code. Okay. This is the sole point dynamics in discrete time. So as you see here, it just the idea is to introduce the uh, the, the sole point dynamics. So in this case, if I want to obtain one step evolution of the sole point dynamics, I need all of this information. I need x, I need the dual variables, the gradients, the gradient of the the constraint function, and so on. With Kuhlman, I only need to obtain the approximation. I only need the state and one step higher of the state to obtain that, it's just to see where are we going. So this is the main idea. We have a discrete plan optimization algorithm. In this case, just the simple one, but we can have an accelerated, like an instead of uh, accelerated discrete time optimization, even a, a black box here, optimizing. So that's the idea. We can then use this information to lift the Kuban, to lift, to lift it to the Kuban space and obtain the Kuban representation. And with that, we can obtain a continuous time approximation of this, of what is happening here. We will see later why are we doing this and why it's interesting. So first, how we are going to do this. So we are going to obtain an approximation of the infinitesimal generator, just using a traditional approach from Mago, Mago, Alexander Moreau uh, have been using this. So we are obtaining a similar uh, approximation of this. And, uh, we have this, you can see we can reconstruct an approximation of the, of the Kuhlman, what I call kuhlman sauer point dynamics. So we obtain this going from the approximation of the infinite generator, we can obtain this. And in this way, we have a continuous time solve point dynamics obtaining approximated using Kuhlman basic approach. So in here inside, we have the gradient ascent, the gradient descent and the gradient ascent, depending on the variables. And we have all of the elements of the Kuhlman approach. We have the eigen function, the approximated eigen function and the modes. The Kuhlman modes. Also, once we have this uh, approximation, we can prove that on, again under some uh, convexity and continuously conditions, we can also prove stability. We know we can use the uh, eigen function, the Kuhlman eigen functions, to construct this Lyapunov positive definite function, and it can be proved that uh, the the lead derivative on the sol point flow is negative. So we can somehow guarantee the stability of that point. So in that case, we can say that this theorem implies that its solution of the sol, the continuous time sol point flow converts to the unique global optimizer. So we have one of the, the ideas that is connected that we know from Kuhlman result that we can obtain that. This is a very simple example to illustrate the ideas uh, so we have here the, the red line is the constraint. So we have to end that and end up there. So in the dotted line is the discrete time uh, 
algorithm that is based on some step size. And the, the, dot, the, the bold line is the approximation, the continuous and approximation. So we can see here that it's going a little bit faster. This is the X variables and the, the primal variables, and these are the dual variables. So we can see here the same. This is the discrete version, and this is the approximated continuous time version. So we see that it's working. We are arriving to the point. We are arriving to the, 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 the dual variable solution also. So we are, uh, uh, the algorithm is working somehow. Now let me show you the case when we have non-convex functions. So in this case, we can have multiple minimizers. So in that case, what can we do? So this is the plan. We can use, again, we can use, it. We can use the CUP1 spectra to discover multiple invariant spaces. And with that, we can use the, uh, the Kumanikian functions with a value zero for continuous time and one for discrete time. Actually, we are using the discrete time version uh, in order to identify these invariant regions. I will show you a little bit more about this. And we know that inside that invariant regions, we will obtain, uh, we will have the, uh, the stable or unstable points. In this case, that would be the stable points that are the minimizer in each region. So what we are doing here, we are identifying these invariant uh, sewer spaces. We are decomposing the system in this way. We know that we can split, we can partition the system in this way. And we can obtain this million invariant. So as we know this, we can use the Aachen function and the the multiplicity. So using the, uh, the unitary agent value, we can uh, obtain, we can use that agent function associated with that unitary agent value. And with that, we can obtain, uh, we know the, the number of minimizers. So every region that have a minimizer will be connected to one of the agent function associated with the unitary value. So with that idea, we can uh, take data from all of the uh, space, some data distributed along all of the state. And with that, we use the agent function associated with the unitary value in order to identify the regions. The theoretical concept is the Virchow-Pinchin-Evgody theorem that relates with the average in time and with the space. So with that, this is the, the idea. We are doing this. So with that, and then after we have this result, we can use a k-means or another spectral classification algorithm in order to obtain the initial condition related with one, 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 one of the state or the other. So that's based the basic idea. So once we have identified these local invariant sewer spaces, we can, all, we can obtain a local Kuban operator in that region. In every region, we obtain one, one Kuban operator. And one, with one of that, once we have done that, we can obtain a similar approach that we had here before for each local sewer space, so Francis sewer space. So in that case, we have this. So using the local coupon operator concept, we can obtain a local solve point dynamics approximation in each sewer space Xi. So in that case, we can use like a parallel because they are not related. Once we have, once we have, we have identified the regions, we can have local op coupon operator. We have, then we have this solve point dynamics. So we can, at the same time, go to find the minima inside each region. So that's one of the interesting results that we can associate. This is, a, again, a very simple example that we have here, uh, 
uh, function that in this space have two uh, minima. You can see here that have two minima. So the algorithm somehow, as uh, you can see here, this is the, the agent function. They, they are mapping the inputs to some points. So it's really uh, well defined. So with this, we use a, a spectral clustering algorithm to obtain the initial conditions related with this uh, function. In that way, we have like a split this and we have obtained two local coupon operator. This is one local coupon operator and this is the other one. And again, the dotted line is the discrete time version of the algorithm and the bold line is the coupon operator. So we see the response of the system here, uh, the same thing. So we are arriving to each minimizer in each region of this uh, problem. So the only constraint here is that we are inside this region, minus one, one, because the, the full function has, has like a six minima, but in this space, it only has two, and we see that the trajectories of the of the soul points dynamics converge to that point. So that's the, the basic idea, some connections that we have uh, with coupon operator and soul point dynamics for constraining optimization. But from, from that point is where I, I, I want to go from that because that's just things that we already know. But now we need some concept for further the development. So in this case, one of the things that are, that I that we need to include here is uncertainty, uncertainty in all levels. Because one of the assumptions is that we know all the functions, we know all the constraints perfectly, we have perfect measure. So what happens when you have uncertainty here? So in that case, our intuition is that we can use also a Kuhlman operator approach similar to what we have done, but using some concept from a recent result from Professor Mesich on random dynamical system using Kuhlman operator. So in that way, we can somehow obtain a similar approach, like uh, we are going to relate with continuous time, but in this case, we are using random dynamical system. So in that case, now we can introduce the disturbance to the, the system, include uncertainty and include variation. And the idea is with that, we expect to obtain some data-driven robust our point dynamics. So that, that would be a very interesting result. Uh, competing, as I said, they would be, I hope that it will be uh, efficient, more efficient than the traditional robust uh, optimization. Another, a, a little bit more complicated, that would be how we can introduce the idea of real-time optimization in this scenario. Because now we are using some available data. We are using uh, a, a traditional simple algorithm, and we construct a Kuhlman operator. We obtain an approximation using that data. But how we can implement some real-time version of that. How we can do that, that would be another part. And in application, we will use that, this kind of data-driven modeling and optimization in the transactive control problem. That is the problem that I present at the beginning, that in Power Network, we need to introduce distributed energy resources. That is an optimization problem. Uh, so, that we call transactive control. I will explain this a little bit more in the next slide. Uh, also, we need a fully distributed solution of this algorithm. Because in, in our approach, the, the concept that I presented before, everything is centralized because we have just one system, one plant. But what happens when we have a network? So I need a distributed version of that algorithm. And finally, the connection with the beginning, when I was talking about feedback-based optimization, the idea is how we can implement some data-driven feedback-based optimization in more complex scenarios 
and of course in a network. And the final, I will explain this a little bit more also in the next slides, the prediction of multiplex network. I will explain a little bit more, a little bit more what is this multiplex networks and how we are going to do. So first, the, the distributed optimization problem is that we have several agents in a network communicating between a Laplacian matrix. So we have this, this is the constraint, it's a, it's a cyber constraint, it's a communication constraint. So we need to solve this problem. So we need a distributed version, distributed version of our, our algorithm, our Kuhlman operator algorithm. So we need a distributed version of this. Somehow an idea, just an intuition that, that we will be able to obtain uh, an approximation for each node like this, similar to the idea to the split the space, but in this case, we are using the constraint of the Laplacian. So we can try to obtain something like this, but we need to prove this and see exactly how we are going to obtain the distributed representation using Kuhlman. So in a network, I know there are several results about networks, so we can also uh, include that to obtain this model. This is the distributed version of the algorithm. The transactive control is a little bit complicated because we have a bi-level optimization problem. In this case, we have this optimal energy price that is, 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 is one agent, and we have all of the, the rest of the agents. They are interacting, but the thing is that we have one optimization problem on top, that is slower, so we have two times the scale. This one is slower than the response of the physical network. The physical network is going faster than the communication network in this case. This is a physical response. In, in this case, in order to solve the price, we are going in a different time scale. So we have a bi-level optimization problem where we have two levels in different times scale. So how we can obtain something like a data driven distributed transactive control, control using a Kuhlman approach. So how we can include this different time and scale into the optimization algorithm. That's the, the main idea. Here we see the two dynamics. So we have the dynamic, the pricing dynamics that is going in, in it's like in the top, is the top, uh, the higher level of the optimization algorithm. And this is the dynamics of the system. So we have the power network, the agents that are the power network. And here we have the dynamic, the cell phone dynamics. So how we integrate this, how we can solve this problem, how we can obtain a data version, that data-driven version of this interacting dynamics. So that's one of the problems that we are interested in. And finally, the multiplex networks means that we have several networks interacting between them. We have this node and the replica nodes that they are connecting, connected between them. So we have different network uh, interacting between them. An example is the, the infrastructure network when you have, for example, here, the power network, the another layer would be uh, the gas network and the other one could be water. So we have some nodes that use water, use gas and use power in order, for example, to generate energy. So in that cases, we have a traditional multiplex network that is also called uh, multiplex energy, multi-energy systems. We have this kind of interaction. So in that case, it's not, you know, it's not easy to extrapolate the ideas. This could be like a distributed optimization version of these multiplex networks. The alpha parameter here indicates where is the layer that we are. And instead of, of a Laplacian, we have a, something that is called a supra-Laplacian matrix. That is something like a 
Laplacian matrix or Laplace, a Laplacian of Laplacian matrix. This is just one of the ideas because we can study more possibilities of multiplex networks model. This is just one idea to simplify the, the things. And I have some questions here. For example, can we obtain a relationship between the spectra of the supra Laplacian and the Kuffman spectra? That means that if I have information, I have measured in all of the levels, I can obtain using that information, I can construct a Kuffman operator that is able to represent the dynamic, not only on one network, but also the interaction between the networks. I think that somehow that can be possible because Kuban has to be able to do that. Another possibility, then we can extend the traditional results. I say traditional, but it's not traditional. Traditional results in continuous time optimization in networks to multiplex networks. So the idea that I presented at the beginning, just for one agent, can be extended to networks and then can be extended to multiplex networks. I, I, I know that some results are available for nonlinear identification of networks. So how can we extend that nonlinear identification to identify multilayer networks? When we have non, sometimes we have nonlinear uh, networks, we have nonlinear interaction between the nodes. So how we can do that? So, uh, I think that that would be some concluding remarks. So what is the idea? We want to go to a data-driven, non-linear feedback-based optimization in network using an alternative view that is using the Kuffman basic uh, formulation and the Kuffman basic uh, approximation to obtain this kind of robust feedback optimization. The idea then is to include the uncertainty in our level. So in that case, we will find a connection. We will try to find a connection between the available result of the Kuffman operator associated with, associated with random dynamical system. So that would be like at the path to do that. And also the applications to more complex problem is challenging. So in that case, as I, as I mentioned, how we solve the problem of different time scale and also the problem of multiplex network and multi-energy system uh, on these interdependent infrastructures. I would like to thank my, my, my team. This is the part of my research group that has been working on Kuppman operator. On one hand, we have Duván Tejas Castro, the now is postdoc at Clemson University, working with Professor Umesh, Camilo Garcia, the, working on analysis of region of attractions for application in anaerobic digestion process. Now he's postdoc at uh, University of Mons in Belgium. And Vladimir, who is in the last part of his uh, PhD, he's working on data-driven distributed voltage control for microbits. So he's working particular particular in that particular problem in microbits and he is, uh, he has he's using a Kuhlman operator so uh, thank you very much for the invitation and if you have any questions uh, thank you for your presentation I think we have uh, some time for questions so please all right, I, I will go first. Uh, thank you very much. That was a very nice presentation and a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Professor Mejic. Very nice. Uh, so, uh, it, if I understand it correctly, the, the basic idea is to start with an optimization algorithm, find essentially a conjugacy, a linearization to Kuppmann eigenfunctions. And then use the fact that we have now a linear system to actually solve the optimization problem. So you're really using the underlying optimization algorithm as a black box producing data. Yes, exactly. Which I, which I think is, is really, really nice. Um, so the saddle point algorithm itself, uh, what is interesting to me is 
<clears throat> if you have a Hamiltonian system, which is a bit different because the, the derivatives are, you know, the, uh, skew symmetric, <laughs> has a very um, <clears throat> um, um, so the, the location of eigenvalues is always on the imaginary axis of the unit circle, depending on whether you're in, in continuous time or discrete time. Is there any handle analytically on the, on the eigenvalues of the saddle point problem for the Koopman operator? Did, did you try to take a look at that? No, 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 no. I, I, I know that there are some results from Michael Jordan for just the saddle point dynamics and for Hamiltonian system and symplectic geometry. But yeah. the relationship the that with Koopman, no. I, I think that that would be a very nice idea because we can obtain several results. So in, in, that, in that particular case, when you have a Hamiltonian, then the Koopman operator eigenvalues are going to be on the imaginary axis. Yes. Um, but in, in this case, you, you do have convergence, right? So they, they have to be to the left to, to get the stability because you're using the stability theorem, yes? Yes. Um, um, that, that, that we did, which I also find very nice. Uh, it's, it's a really nice, nice use of that. Um, okay, so I mean, that could be an interesting, interesting duality, right? So these inertial algorithms, I think are a little bit different, right? Yes, they differ. Because they're Hamiltonian in nature. In nature, yes. Yeah. For example, the distributed optimization problem, the Laplacian have one aging value at zero. Yeah. So the stability result, I need to do something because it's not possible to use, for example, they are not all on the left. So one, one thing that you might consider using is, so it, in general, is, <clears throat> in generalized Laplace analysis, I don't know if you looked at that. Um, so uh, there is a paper of mine on, uh, it, it was first stated in 2013, I think. And then uh, there is a recent paper of mine on numerical approximation of coupon operator that's on archive. If you're interested, I can I can send it to you. But basically, yes, the idea the the basic idea is that one computes like you did the invariance first and finds the basis of attraction if if they if 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 you want to, but then you subtract that part from the signal. And the rest of the signal. If you have only one eigenvalue at the unit at, at the imaginary axis, the rest of the signal is going to be in the left half plane. So this is not the easiest thing in the world to subtract because you can you know you can have you can have numerical uh, numerical um, aspects that are nasty. On the other hand, it's a rigorous thing to do in the sense that it, that one gets the the correct result. So that that might be of some of some interest. So. Yes. Uh, Gen you know, if, if you look up generalized Laplace analysis, that might be of some of some use because it deals exactly with that problem. Okay, perfect, perfect. I will, I will check out. Yeah, but otherwise, uh, thank you, thank you very much for uh, for. Uh, no, thank you, thank you for the invitation. Is that to us and, uh, this was a very nice talk. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Or suggestions? <laughs> Hi, Eduardo. Um, great Hi, talk. I, I, was, I was wondering if you could actually uh, review how you parameterize the optimization problem as a dynamical system. Sorry, sorry, what is the question? I was wondering if you could go back to the slide where you yes. introduced, yeah. One or uh, this point on or the mm -hmm. or this one? Yeah. This is like a summary of the idea that we have a uh, constraint optimization problem and we can obtain the solve dynamics. The idea is we, we, we take the, 
the Lagrangian functions. Um, we obtain the the gradient descent in the primal variable and the gradient ascent in the dual variable of that. And when you when you do that, when you do this, for example, this, we go we obtain uh, this in this particular case, of course, that, that the, the constraint is linear. So we obtain this. Okay, yeah, is this specific uh, formulation in any published work yet? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. this is a, this is a traditional resource. Uh, oh. You can find this in, okay. this is the South Point Dynamic, yes have been published since, since, since a lot of time, I think. So what is new is try to understand this as an optimization, like a, take this as a nonlinear feedback uh, and construct and uh, start from this point and uh, increase uh, the complexity of the plant and also the complexity of the constraints and add some disturbance and uncertainties on, on, on this problem. That's the, like a, the goal of the research. Okay. We, are, we are going to yeah. just the first step that is how I can obtain an approximation of this using data, using Kuhlman. Right. of this. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, so I might have one question. So you mentioned that you are applying this theory to microbit together with your with your uh, colleague. Can you can you <laughs> give some more comments on that time? interested in that part, or maybe a recommend a literature in which I can find more details on that. On uh, smart grids? Yeah, yeah. In this problem? Yeah, yes. at, the, at the end, you said that your uh, that colleague of yours, Vladimir, is using this theory uh, for, for micro bits, if I understood well. Ah, uh, yes, Vladimir. Yeah. Oh, of course, we, we have just submitted a paper that is, uh, Actually, this is the title of the paper. Yes, yes, I send you because you just, just send it that paper. Uh, I, I, I will send you this paper. And also I, I can send you another paper that is uh, transactive control, the dynamics, this uh, bit by level problem, this by level problem, but with no data, but just using the dynamics, using this kind of dynamics in two different time scales. Sure, sure, sure. I will share with you any okay. comments. Be very welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so, are there any other questions, maybe? Okay, if not, I'll stop recording now.